Welcome to another week of First Peter. We're wearing blue, so I decided to sing the blue song. And uh, I love you, Pastor Hannah, and God too. All right. Rhyme master. So, ignoring all of that, welcome to another episode of CP Kids. We're still in First Peter, which has been an awesome journey so far, and we've been learning so much. So we're glad that you could join us again for another lesson on CP Kids First Peter. But before we start, I just want to remind you that God loves you so much, and he has a special plan for your life. Each one of you, he loves you, and he has a special plan for your life, which is so amazing because there's so many people on this earth and yet he still cares about each one of you and still ha got an amazing plan for you, which is so cool. BGMC, we are in 2021. Our goal is $2,021 and we are moving forward in that. So keep on saving, keep on giving in your buddy barrels or giving online, whichever one is the easiest for you. We have many different avenues for you to give and so you just keep working hard and saving your money and giving it to BGMC because we are going to help so many missionaries and kids all over the world with this money. And guys, if you're seeing this video, that means that we are back in person with Kids Ministry at the theater. We have our own theater. Don't have to sit in the adult service anymore. We know that Different families have different comfort levels, but if you're comfortable coming back, you can bring your buddy barrel in person now. Yep. Sounds like a plan. Stan. All right. Before we move into our lesson, we are going to spend some time in prayer. Yes. And we are going to focus on another couple of words from the prayer. So far, we've gone through our Father in Heaven. Um, hallowed, right? Or hallowed holy, or holy, holy. means the same thing. And now we are at is your name. And our card this week says, think about this. The Bible teaches us that God's name is very special. It's not just what we call God, but it represents who he is. When we ask that God's name be hallowed or holy or kept holy, we're telling God that we love everything about him. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his followers together. Um, and do your best, just do your best to say it with me. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. <laughs> so, so let it be. <laughs> you probably noticed that at the end I said evil, Pastor Hannah said the evil one. Different versions of the Bible um, say depending on what you read, say evil or evil one. So you can do it whichever way you want to. But I was right, because this is the version that we do every week. Okay, it says Pastor evil one. Hannah, okay. <laughs> All right, let's get into our new lesson on First Peter chapter 2, verses 11 to 12. Wooka, 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 watch now. Tell me, do you wish your life was sweeter? Tell me, are you losing hope? Friend, you need to stop and read First Peter when you're at the end of your rope. Life's not always sun and flowers. Sometimes it can rain for hours. Peter says, despite the showers, we can do more than mope. Let's find our hope. Hi there, I'm Phil, and it's time to tackle the next chunk of First Peter. Does everyone have the right names this time? I am Sam the Turtle. I am Emily Elephant. I am a talented and a very good looking. Close enough. 
Uh, last time we learned about the new temple that God is building, not out of stones, but out of people. And that Jesus is part of this. Yeah, but he isn't just another stone in the temple. He's the cornerstone. That's the most important stone that the whole rest of the building is lined up around. And we can be friends with God if our lives are lined up with Jesus' life. That's the cornerstone thing. Excellent, guys. You really learned a lot. Do we get a gold star? Uh, one for each of you, if I had any. But enough about what we learned last time. Let's read the Bible together and see what we can learn next. Okay, who can read 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 and 12? Elephant! Where? Oh, right, that's me. <clears throat> My turn. Dear friends, you are like visitors and strangers in this world, so I beg you to stay away from the evil things your bodies want to do. These things fight against your soul. People who do not believe are living all around you. They might say that you are doing wrong, so live good lives. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will give glory to God in the day when Christ comes again. That's good stuff. Dear friends, you are like visitors and strangers in this world. Now other versions say you are sojourners and exiles. Sojourner? What's a sojourner? A sojourner is a traveler. A visitor is pretty close. A sojourner is a traveler who's staying in your land for a day or a week or a month, but they're just visiting. They're just passing through. That's a sojourner. And an exile? We talked about that before. It's someone who can't live in their true home. Right. They're not able to live in their true home, so they have to live somewhere else for a while. And why does Peter call the Christians he's writing to sojourners and exiles? I think I remember this. Because if you're a follower of Jesus, you're a son or daughter of the king, and your true home is in the kingdom of God. That's right. But it doesn't mean far away in heaven. It means where God rules completely. Where there is no sin and no dying, and no one taking your cookies away and replacing them with gluten-free cookies. Exactly except maybe for the cookie part. But right, when God brings heaven and earth together and makes everything right, when his reign is perfect, that's our true home. Peter wants to keep our eyes focused on that future home. Why? Because that gives us hope when we're having bad days today. That's where our hope comes from. Absolutely. Okay, stay away from the evil things your bodies want to do. What's that about? Sometimes my body wants to move to the beat. Eh, I don't think that's it. Is it about our old bad habits? Yes. It's not about wanting to move to the beat, Carlo. You can dance if you wanna. Just don't leave your friends behind. <laughs> uh, no, really, Sam is right. When Peter says what your body wants to do, he's talking about your old self, your old habits of being selfish, of putting yourself first. These are new Christians Peter is talking to, so their old habits are still strong. It takes practice and the help of the Holy Spirit to get rid of those old habits and make new ones. But why does Peter say people who do not believe are living all around you? They might say you are doing wrong. People who don't believe in what? UFOs? Bigfoot? The Easter Bunny! No, none of those things. People who don't believe that Jesus is the cornerstone, the way to become friends with God, people who aren't following Jesus. They might say that you are doing wrong, so live good lives. What does us living good lives have to do with people who aren't following Jesus? Do you know what a witness is? Sure, I've seen it on TV. Someone robs a bank, takes all the money, and the police show up and say, did anyone see what happened? Is there a witness? Right, a witness is someone who can say, yes, I saw what happened and I can tell you about it. You may not know this, but our lives are witnesses. Our lives saw the bank robber? To give witness is to reveal something that is true. If we're followers of Jesus, our lives give witness to the power of God. The change in our lives as we put off the old way of living and put on the new way of living, it's like our lives are standing up in court saying, see, this is what the power of God can do. What does this have to do with the bank robbery? It's got nothing to do with the bank robbery. Then why even bring it up? I was just explaining what a witness was. Uh, let me read this part again. Live good lives. Then they, the people who aren't following Jesus, will see the good things you do and they will give glory to God. 
Our lives are a witness to the power of God. That's why it's so important for us to ask God to help us put off the old bad habits of selfishness and put on new habits of love. Because when our friends see us changing, they see the power of God. Wow! I'm a witness! We're all witnesses. See you next time. What's, so we only did two verses today, but they were packed full of just good information for us to learn. And so we're going to go over just one half of one of the verses um, and just repeat it a couple times so that way it can really sink in. And then we're going to spend some time in prayer and just asking God to speak to us through this verse. So first I'm going to read it and then I'm going to have you guys repeat after me a couple of times, okay? Sounds good. This is from 1 Peter 2, 12b. That means the second half of verse 12 and it says so live good lives then they non-christians will see the good things you do and they will give glory to god all right you guys ready to repeat after me here we go yes. first peter 2 12 b first peter 2 12 b so live good lives so live good lives then they, non-Christians, then they, non-Christians, will see the good things you do. Will see the good things you do. And they will give glory to God. And they will give glory to God. All right, let's do this one more time. We should say it with a funny accent. What should we do? Um, Mario? I don't know, Mario. I'm a Mario. Okay. I eat of the stars. We can do it like Carlos the snail. Okay. Because <laughs> he's so handsome and good looking, right? So handsome and good looking. First Peter 212B. First Peter 212B. So live a good lives. So live a good lives. Then day non Christians. Then day non Christians. We'll see the good things you do. We'll see the good things you do. And they will give the glory to God. And they will give her the glory to God. I'm pretty sure he's Italian now that I say it. <laughs> I didn't know what he was before, but I think he's so Italian. So basically, we just did Mario, even though you said it was Carlo. Sure. It sounded kind of like Carlo when you were doing it, so that's what I went with. All right, so let's talk about this verse a little bit. First Peter 2, 12b. What is Peter trying to say right here to us and to all of the people that he's writing to? I think it's important to mention one thing he is not telling us. He is not telling us that uh, we need to be good or perfect to get into heaven. He's not saying you need to live good lives so that you can get into heaven. He's saying you need to live good lives so that you can set a good example for other people. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, a huge struggle, especially like in school right where um if you would live a certain way that the bible tells you all the time that people might sometimes just think you're weird um and so that can be really hard because you don't want to be different because a lot of times 
when people are different in a school, there's other people who are unkind and who make fun of them. And then when other kids see that, let's call it a bully, making fun of someone for being different, they can join in too. And it can be really tough. Um, but God doesn't say, if it's tough, don't live a good life. Just do it if it's easy. He says, you know, at all times, live a good life. Not because you need to be perfect to get into heaven, but to set an example for others. Um, and through that example, others will be able to see God. And I know, like, sometimes we can think, I just need to set a good example, like set a godly example, and then people will be drawn to God. But that's not always true. You also need to share the good news when you have the opportunity. And by living a good life, that gives you an opportunity for people to actually listen when you then begin to talk about God. If you're just like everyone else, or you're even like more mean than other people, then they're not going to listen when you try to share about Christianity or about Jesus with them. This also makes me think of how Peter was a follower of Jesus, right? He was one of his disciples, and he kind of carries on the, the teachings that Jesus was teaching. Because if you read a lot of Jesus' teaching, he's not always concerned about us doing the right thing, but he's concerned about our hearts behind it. And it's really all about our heart. And so if we're just doing good things to check it off a list or to say, okay, I did what I was supposed to do, or like Pastor Brandon said, to just get into heaven, that's not the right heart behind it, right? I mean, Jesus is always concerned about what our heart is. Um, we should do it because we love him and because we want the world to see what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. And... Well, like Pastor Brandon has said, people may think you're weird or may make fun of you in the moment, but what you're doing is planting seeds. And those seeds will be planted in their lives whether they know it or not. And later on, something might happen through those seeds. So even though it may seem hard in the moment, you're really, really, really being a witness for Jesus by your actions. And you're planting seeds in their hearts that, they, that might grow later on. So we're going to take a few minutes and we're both going to pray through this and ask God to speak to us through this verse. And then we're going to give you guys a few seconds to do that as well. Because like we've said before, we're reading scripture, which is words from God to us. And so that's like God speaking to us. And now we're going to speak back to God and then we're going to hear for his voice again. And that is called a conversation, right? A conversation with God. Mm -hmm. All right, so Pastor Brandon, why don't you go first, and then I'll pray, and then we'll give you guys a few seconds to pray, too. All right. Father God, um, help me to set a, a, a Christian example for others, um, especially others who don't know you, and help me not to do it um, so that I can earn my way into heaven um, or so that I can impress you, but do it so that I can set an example for others. That others will see the life um, I live where I care for others, where I love others, um, where I'm always nice, even when people aren't nice to me. Um, and through that, it'll, it'll give me opportunities as you lead me to be able to then share the good news um, and invite people to become your family. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your words today from Scripture, Lord, and we pray that these words would just sink deep into our hearts. Help us to remember them as we go throughout our days and remember um, that we have the power to live good lives for you. Um, through the Holy Spirit and through Jesus' work on the cross, Lord, we have an example in Jesus and in all of the believers of how to live good lives and that we can do this um, because you are in us God and I pray that as we do live our good lives and we do the best that we can Lord that you would help that to plant seeds in the people around us and that you would help that to grow and that when the time comes you would give us the words to speak Lord um, and that you would just be with us and give us courage and give us boldness, Lord, and just give us wisdom. 
And we just thank you that this will all give glory to you in the end. In your name we pray. So let it be. So let it be. All right, we're going to give you guys just a few seconds for you to pray in your own words and ask God to speak to you through this verse. Okay? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that um, you were able to have that time to have a conversation with God. I hope that uh, he spoke to you in that time. It's time now for... The Good News. Um, and the good news starts out by... Um, this revelation or this kind of thing that God is real and he really loves you. Um, and if you're hearing that for the first time and you're not sure about either part of that, if you're not sure if God is real or he really loves you, I would encourage you to bring that to prayer, um, to just close your eyes and say, God, if you're real, Help me to know that. Make yourself known to me. Or, God, I know you're real, but sometimes I'm not sure if you love me. Help me to experience your love, Father God. Help me to have an, a real experience of your love. And it might take you praying that more than one time. It might take you praying that for a long time, but eventually God is going to answer that prayer, and he's going to let you know that he's real and that he really loves you. And um, you, you also might be watching this video, and you already know that God is real and he, he really loves you. Um, and if that's you, I'm so happy. Um, I'm so glad that, that you're with us today. And this is an opportunity for you to learn how to share that this good news with others and, and um, how, to how to help others respond to this good news. If you are watching right now and you can feel that God is real and you can feel his love for you in this moment, we want to give you an opportunity to respond. And it's very simple to respond. Um, in the Bible, we're told um, by Jesus and by others that if you want to respond to his good news, if you want to become part of the family of God, all you have to do is admit that you're not perfect and believe in Jesus. And if you want to do that, we use uh, the first three letters of the alphabet, A, B, C. Uh, a stands for admit, B stands for believe, and C stands for choose. All you have to do is pray the A, B, Cs. You need to first admit that I'm not perfect and I need help. Secondly, you need to believe in God um, and Jesus' power to save you. And then last, you need to choose to follow God with all of your life. If you'd like to do that, um, then repeat after me as we pray. And if you're already a, a follower of Jesus, I want you to also repeat after me, not because you need to be saved again, um, but because I want you to continue to learn how to lead others. Um, in responding to the good news. Father God. Father God. I admit that I'm not perfect. I admit that I'm not perfect. And I need help. And I need help. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. And in your power to save me. And in your power to save me. I choose to follow you with all of my life. I choose to follow you with all of my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, so let, let it be. be.
Guys, as always, we so enjoyed having you with us today. Um, and I pray that you go in the love of God as you explore the plans that he has for your life. Have a good week.